Hi guys, Gary Noden of GenVFX. Welcome to another one of our little one by one tutorial things. This is less of a one by one, even though it's one thing. And it's not really a tutorial. This is probably more a, a, a tip. Um, but it's based upon a comment that I got on the Ukrainian flag, uh, not one of the political ones I got, um, but one of the, it's actually a really good question. And I had to think before I gave the guy the answer. But the, the question I received was this. There's a mesh cylinder, homie. Not sure why you went through all that trouble with the cube. And I looked back at the video and I thought, well, what do you mean all that trouble with the cube? And basically I made a cube and I'd extended it up and I'd given it some subdivisions and I'd used the subdivision surface to make it look like it was an actual pole. And the thing is that this is not something that I did accidentally. This is something that I do all the time. And the reason for it is um, basically good practice. And by that, I don't mean it's good for me to practice making cubes into poles. Um, what I mean is it's good practice to build everything as much as possible out of quads. And there's a very good reason for it. And I'm gonna show you what that is. So this is basically a, which is better triangles or quads tutorial. Um, I don't know why I went American, but there it is. Um, so let's just get into this. I'm basically going to go into the main scene and I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to basically, what I want is two similar looking objects to explain the triangles and the quad thing. So I'm going to get rid of the default cube. Bye default cube. Goodbye. And I'm going to add into here, I'm going to add in a, a UV sphere and I'm going to set its settings to uh, 30 and 15. Because if you noticed, uh, the rings are always half of what the segments are, which means that you get proper squares, you don't get um, anything that's not a distended square until you get further down. So in the middle you get nice squares, and I want them to be nice squares. So here we go. So I'm going to move this in two units in the Y. So let's go GY2, shift them out of the way, press Enter to get that done. And I'm going to add a new object in, I'm going to add an icosphere. And I'm going to push up its divisions until it looks similar, that's a bit too much, until it looks similar to the other one. So if I was to look at this, and these were both smooth show, smooth shaved, if they both had a smooth shave, they look pretty much the same. I mean, you can see there's more edges on this one, but there's, but there's not that much more. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to basically put on the wireframe first of all, so you can see the distinct differences between the icosphere and the UV sphere. The UV sphere is made of quads and the icosphere is made of triangles. And it's all very clever and it looks like a football. And I love that, who doesn't? Who doesn't look something that looks like it's made out of football? Um, so, and it's ideal for a lot of structural things because in a lot of cases, if you're doing a static building or something like a gherkin object in the middle of London, its exterior facets are triangular. And the reason for that is because structurally triangles are stronger than quads, but we're not looking into doing structural strength, we're doing 3D modeling. So keep that in mind. Now, I have got these two objects. I'm just gonna make a few little changes to them both. I'm gonna, go into, I'm gonna pick them both, and I'm just gonna go into edit mode, and you'll see everything selected, and I'm gonna go SZ4. So we've got a nice bit of a height on them both. And let's go back to object mode. I'm not gonna move this one a little bit further, a little bit further that way. I don't think its location is zero is gonna help us very much. Let's make that minus three. No, not there. Let's make that minus three in the Y. There you go. And I'm going to make this uh, three in the Y. So they're a bit more separated apart. So the next thing we're going to do here is I'm going to add a subdivision surface to this one. I'm going to turn up optimal display so you can see the divisions. And I'm going to set the local viewport divisions to two and the render ones to two. And I'm going to do the same to this one. A subdivision surface. I'm going to set that to two. So the optimal display, there you go, you can see. And so you're seeing there's a really nice sort of like pattern and it looks really quite smooth. That's that's nice, yeah, that looks lovely. And it is smooth shaped, it is smooth shaved. It is smooth shaded as well. smooth shaved. What is wrong with me today? I don't, I don't know where that's come from. It's keeping in. Um, uh, so it's very, very beautiful. It's very architectural, absolutely. But this is like very, very functional. We like that as well. So this is why we build things with quads rather than building them with triangles. I'm going to now deform this object and I'm going to deform this object with exactly the same method. And I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to go into the modifiers here, get a simple deform, automatically set to a twist. And even that looks quite nice. Uh, we're going to change it to a bend. I'm going to bend that by minus 300. And we have a really lovely, really lovely sort of 
smooth sort of feel to this. There's a nice flow to the polygons. Keep that word in mind, flow. Um, I'm gonna do the same on this one. Let's add the simple deform, shade to a band, set that to minus 300. And that also kind of has a nice similar flow, doesn't it? I mean, you can see it just looks quite nice. However, it doesn't. And this is the point. If we uh, stick a shader on these, and I think let's do this now. Uh, if I go into shading, and you can see in here, if you look, this is quite distinct straight away. This is smooth shaded, this is smooth shaded. Um, I'll make it very much more obvious. Let me add a new material. I'm gonna, obviously a principal BSDF because they're just so top. Um, let's give it a nice uh, color. Uh, that's not a nice color. And let's change this over from Eevee to Cycles and put it on GPU Commute compute something wrong with me today and so you can see if i then go here let's go uh scene lights and scene world are off there you go and so we have in fact let's put in the scene lights as well let's leave the scene lights in there we go and i'm going to pump up the light a little bit because it's not the brightest i'm going to change it to a sun lamp and set that to one and then push it up a little bit okay I'm going to put the same shader on this one. Let's just put it on material one. There you go. Now, if I put these side by side so you can see them better, let's just go to the top view. And let's stick this over here. And then I go back over here. Oh, that's a nice little, nice little HDRI, isn't it? Um, so these two are next to each other. You'll start to see that the one that's got triangles it's getting odd shading shading stuff going on. Whereas the one without the triangles, the one that's all quads, is beautiful and smooth. Because triangles stretch and break. Whereas quads just stretch. They kind of pull themselves around and stuff and they form into nice smooth surfaces. And that is a big difference. So let's make this metallic so you can really see what's going on. And let's reduce the roughness so you can really see what's going on. And now I think it's probably more evident yeah definitely more evident if you can see these are fundamentally the same object got the same thing going on the one that's quads is really smooth and but here where these triangles are it's making broken stretch marks it's basically stretching the triangles so they are forming into a nasty reflection and that is why that is one of the reasons why we don't use triangles when we're doing objects that are going to be deformed because quads they tend to bend better. Um, and that's kind of the, the reasoning why I ended up doing it, I think. But again, it's it's the, why the poll was like that. Um, I um, tend to build things uh, so that if I need to do anything to them afterwards, then I can actually deform them better. Um, this is one example, obviously. Let's just increase the roughness on this and maybe we can... You can still see the striations you see there that you're not getting on the other one. There you go, look at those. Whoa, nasty. Um, and if you say, well, we'll just put up more subdivisions. Yes, you can, but it depends how close you're going to get in. And really, in all honesty, stick with the quads. Just just stick with the quads. Look at this. You can see the stretch that's going on as it's trying to keep the shape. Whereas that, the flow is just perfect. Stick to quads. Quads work. Um, so that's basically the reason why I did that. And that's the basic the reason why I would do it every single time. You never know when you're going to deform something. I've, I've seen before um, some of the big effects houses um, down in London. They they will send out um, essentially uh, a source test. So they'll get the uh, students who have just finished university. They'll say, or they'll just finish university and say, right, here is uh, a grandfather clock. Here is a cabinet. Here is this. Uh, build it, texture it, light it, please. You don't necessarily have to texture it and light it, but if you want to, build it texture it, and light it and anyone who's got any brains is going to build it texture it, and light it and they will show the turnaround of all of the beautiful geometry and that's why you will see things like this if i have uh let me just do this i'm going to create a plane let's just go add mesh and let's add a grid and we obviously can't see the wire so let's turn the wireframe on there you go like this and i'm going to make another one Let's go Shift D and let's do that. I'm going to move this over here and now I'm going to create a cylinder. So let's go. I want a, a circle and I want it deformed downwards. Now, again, this is the whole thing about this is a Boolean exercise, but it's also about teaching about why quads are better. 
Um, I'm going to add in here another mesh. I'm going to add in a cylinder. And even though, even though this is probably the cleanest boolean you'll ever come across, the boolean inside of Blender, um, let me just scale this down a bit. There we go. I don't want the object to be the cylinder, and I want it to be exact, not fast. Um, that's absolutely fine. And then when I've done that, I'm going to apply it and I'm going to take that and I'm going to delete that. And we are left with a hole in here. So it's like, well, then we can we can just like, you know, take the edge and extrude it down. And so, OK, well, let's do that. then. so let's go to the add and let's go to the edge. And basically, we want to get rid of any uh, extraneous polygons because we don't need those. But that will ruin the curvature. And then, oh, hang on. You start ending putting yourself in a, an unenviable situation where nothing actually is a proper quad all the way down. If I go all the way around here, I'm doing it very slowly and very intricately, and it's taking me forever. And then by the end of the day, I'll probably have to delete a load of stuff anyway. Whereas what we can actually do is say, right, okay, I want to put a circle in this object and I want to keep the continuity and I want to keep quads. Okay, so you can do this in most software that's 3D. If you go into edit mode and let's say, right, well, let's, I want to make a, a circle. So let's say I want it across the middle and I want it to be one, let's, uh, there we go. So I wanted to be uh, one, two, three, four, do that, and then here, and here, and here, and here, and here. So I'm selecting all of these polygons, and I'm going to go uh, loop tools, uh, circle. So that gives me that circle. It doesn't change, put a circle on the other ones in the middle. Well, we can do, we can get it to do that if we want to. Uh, so we take these ones and then do the same thing again, uh, loop tool, circle, and then we can select these ones in here, and we can go. Uh, a loop tools uh, circle. So I've got three circles essentially in, in there. But I want to um, extrude these ones down. They are all squares, remember? They're still all squares, but they're made of circles. So let's do that. Let's pick these ones. Just you can't, they're not actually a continuous shape. So we can't just, uh, just can't just uh, do a loop selection of those. Uh, and I go extrude and I can do, extrude those down. And then let's take these four here and let's extrude those down. In fact, let's extrude those up and then I can do an insert, bring that in and then extrude to take that down. And I've got some loads of lovely circles, but every single line there has three other lines connected to it. Everything is a square. Everything is a square. And you think, well, that's not going to subdivide nicely. You go, well, no, it won't. It won't because it just looks rubbish. You know, it will just look rubbish because of the way it works. But what we can do is say, okay, that might be the case, but what I can do now, and I know this is a continuous edge, pick this edge, and that's Alt, Shift, pick this edge, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then I go Control B, and I add a little bit of a bevel, not much. Let's just pull this away, there we go, like that. And let's, because we're in the bevel tool, rather than doing it on the actual modifier, let's uh, pop up another segment in the middle there. And now this time I can do, uh, let's pick uh, this one, and then this one, and this one, and this one, and I can control B and do a little bit of a pull out there. And then let's select this one, so go Alt there, and then Alt Shift, and Alt Shift, and Alt Shift, and then to control B and put a little bevel in there. And of course, we've still got quads. Don't forget, this is all still quads, and we're basically putting shared edges in. Now, this, you know, these, these, these uh, uh, proportionate edging around them. Is allowing us to have a little bit more information and then we can go well i want those to be do i want those to be more octagonal i probably don't uh, but if i now go and press if i actually i won't let me just do this let's go uh, that, this, is bit, this one here and then this one and then this one and then this one and go control b and we can pull that out again another edge like that and i'm going to now put very quickly because I want to leave that. It's not really going to be a sharp edge, but I want to leave it because it is a sharp edge. These ones I can do like this. So it's got a chamfer, a chamfer. And then this one to here, and then this one to here. And I want to leave that one there like that. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one little vertex here. I'm going to go Control Shift B, and I'm going to scale that one out like that. Gives me a load of other ones. And then I'm going to take these points here. And let's scale these out so we've got more of a star shape there. So potentially I'm adding another set of stuff in there. You can see that's what I'm kind of doing with it. And then I get the knife tool. Let's go there. I can't really see. Uh, to there. 
enter that one, that one there to there, enter that one there to there, enter, and then this one here to here and enter. And now I will put back on my subdivision surface, this. And apart from that edge, which I believe I can, I think, uh, I'm not entirely sure to use, no. Keep the corners, there you go. Then I've kind of got something which is already looking smooth and I can increase the subdivisions. And if I just go uh, object, move the object, and then we can turn off the optimal display. There you go, as you can see all the lovely vertices that it's making and all the lovely faces it's making, and they are all quads because you know what? I might just suddenly, for some unknown reason, I might just suddenly go, do you know what? I want to add some deformation to that. Let's deform this thing, not mesh deform. Let's add some deformation. Let's add a simple deform to this. And if you have triangles and you want to do this to it, you can't, not cleanly, not cleanly. It will end up looking all messy. Yeah, and I'm going to add a some sort of shading and let's make it uh, red and let's make it very metallic and let's uh, reduce that roughness there and let's give it a, a nice tropic nature in its shading and a bit of sheen and these we need to see with the cycles render not EV there we go and if I just let's just have a little look with this there you go this is a beautiful perfectly smooth object that is being deformed and it's not breaking because it's got no triangles in it there you go that's why you build everything with quads just because it's quick it's clean and you mean you don't have to go back and do it all over again when someone says can we please bend this there you go that's kind of it that's kind of all this one's going to be about but do you know what i'm so glad i had the comment because it was such a good point and it's really important to keep these things in mind whenever you're doing any 3D. Try and try and try to keep everything clean. Keep it clean, because the cleaner you keep it, the nicer it's going to be, the better it's going to render, and the more opportunity and control you have over it as you're going along. This has been a Gary Noden production. No, <laughs> I'm feeling as I'm going, and you would got to do this, and then do it like this, and then everything will be fantastic. Smashy, nicey, here we go. This is great. Listen, thank you so much again for tuning in. Um, tuning in? This isn't TV. Um, it's it's always great to pass over information. I'm, I'm really proud of everything that's been achieved so far with this channel. There are some bits and bobs I'd love to redo, but the problem is you can't just replace the video. You've got to keep the old one in. So it is as it is. Um, listen, well done, guys, just for sticking along with me for as long as you have been on this one. This one's been 20 minutes. That's not too bad. Um, and I don't think it was anything I've got to cut out of it, but I will check. Listen, um, as I say, have a lovely time. It's summer right now. It's getting there. The weather's getting better. We're having a bit of rain here in the UK, but mostly it's sunshine. Can't complain. Happy. Um, be on your way. Don't forget to like and subscribe on your way. And see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.